In this video, I'm going to be reviewing some of the new features available in Carlson Layout version 1.10, 1.10, as well as some features that were released in versions 1.09 and 1.08. I'm going to jump right in here. I'm already set up in Carlson Layout, and in my dashboard, I can see that we're connected to a simulator, and I'm on the Kentucky single zone projection system, so we're all ready to go. The first thing I want to point out is in the bottom right hand corner of Carlson Layout, you'll see this new plus icon that was added in 1.08. This icon allows you to customize what's available in the right hand quick view menu over here. So in previous versions of Layout, this was locked down. It would always say Measure and Layout. Now if you press this plus icon, you can add new options to this menu. So if you have only basic mode, uh, the new option that's available is Offset. So Offsets used to be a sub menu of Measure. Now it's pulled out and you can add it independently to the right hand side screen. So just to show how this works, I can press the blue star to mark this as a favorite and then press back and we'll see now that offsets is now locked in here on the right hand side of my screen. Now if I want to come in here and just run offsets once, I can just not press the blue star and if you just press play, it'll just run the routine once. So below the basic options for cross and layout, you'll see the new survey module that was introduced in 1.08. This is for options that are used for surveying specifically and not necessarily for construction layout. So the three options here now are Auto by Interval, Average, and GNSS Logging. I'm going to show averaging first in this video, so I'm going to press the blue star to add it to the menu and go back. And now we'll see this nice average available on the right hand side. Let's jump in and look at GNSS averaging. I click this button, I jump into the average screen, and the first thing I would need to do here is define how I want to end my average. How long do I want to average? Now there's three options for doing this. The first is a simple measurement count, the second is time in minutes, and the third is standard deviation between the average positions. So these items can be stacked, and the way this worked is that if I turn on measurement count and standard deviation, both of these requirements will have to be true before the average automatically ends. So I could potentially even turn on all three of these requirements. It's totally up to you. In this case, I'm going to stick with measurement count of 120, standard deviation of 2 hundredths of a foot on the horizontal, and 3 hundredths of a foot on the vertical. So that's going to be how tight my average needs to be before the average automatically ends, in addition to 120 measurement count. Here I'll set the name of my point and the description as well as the layer, and then I'll press start to begin the average. We're now entering the graphical average screen and there's a lot to unpack here, so I'm going to start by explaining what's going on in the graphic. Here we're looking at the horizontal aspect of this average, and what we can see is the black dots represent the individual measurements that are being collected once per second. The pink cross in the middle represents the current average position, and the circles represent error lips. So the blue circle represents all the measurements that fall within one sigma of standard deviation, and the green circle represents all the measurements that fall within two sigma standard deviation. Any of the dots that are outside of these circles would represent outliers in the measurements. We can also jump over in the same way, look at verticals by tapping the vertical tab, and it's similar information. The black dots are graphing as each measurement is taken, showing the individual measurements. The pink line is showing the current average position, and then on the right, you can see the blue band and the green band representing the one sigma and two sigma standard deviation. Looking at the, the data that's on the screen, you can see that the top right up here, we're showing the current latency, RMS, and PDOT values for the measurement. That would be the same information that you're seeing in your status screen if you wanted to open it. And then also the fixed status and the number of satellites. Below that, we have the state of our average requirements. So if you recall, we set this to measure up to 120 measurements. We have not met that requirement yet. And to wait for a standard deviation that is below 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. Those requirements are met. Looking down below, we see the current average values. So here we have the current average to X, Y, and Z as it's being calculated, the total horizontal range and vertical range, and the current standard deviation, which reflect that they are currently below our requirements. So let's just let this average finish. At this point my average is complete. I can see the final average position as well as the range and the deviation and I can look at the graph. I can either store the point at this point or I can resume if I want to add more data to this average. Or finally I can press edit. Inside the edit screen, I can see all the individual measurements, all 120 measurements that make up this particular average. So 
Here's all the measurements. I can see my graph down below. But what's important about this screen is that this is a good opportunity to remove outliers. So if I want to search for the highest horizontal residual, I'm able to search by tapping in the top bar of this table. And then I'm able to turn off the worst measurements of this set. And if you'll watch, the standard deviation will begin to go down. In other words, the measurement is tightening as I'm turning off the outlier measurements. So let's see if we can get it to go down by turning off a few. You'll notice the standard deviation, the Y value, just went down a little bit. And we'll turn off some of the worst verticals as well, just to see if we can make it a little bit better. So this is how I might tighten up my measurement. And then I'll press Done and store to store this measurement. Once the measurement is stored, I can jump over into the pyramid in the upper left-hand corner and go to my points list. And now if I press on point three and press info, I can see that this is an average made of 117 measurements. It's 117 because I've turned off some of the measurements on the previous screen. And finally, I can press report and do a full report of HTML or PDF report of this point and get all the information. So that's how you collect an average using the new graphical average feature in Carlson Layout. The next feature I want to go over is another feature that is found under the plus icon in the new survey module, and that is GNSS static logging. So this is going to enable you to collect static log files on your GNSS receiver. I am going to press the blue star to add this to my main menu and I'll press back. So now I have a logging option here on the bottom next to measure and layout. To start a log, I'll just tap on the logging button. And the first thing I need to choose is whether my log is going to be a pure static file or a stop and go file. For this first example, I'll choose a static file. I'm going to log at one second interval, set my rod height. Internal memory usually works for where to store it. And I choose a file name. I press start logging. And for a static file, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be prompted for my site name and description. So I'll just leave these alone, point three, November 2023. And then I'm going to choose how long I want to log the static file. Typically, you're going to want at least 15 minutes, but in this case, I'm going to do only one minute for an example. So I'll just press start to start logging. And since this is a static file, it's going to drop me right into this fixed screen where I'm going to wait for my static file to be complete. When the time runs out, the file will close automatically, or in this case, I'll just go ahead and hit the close file button to stop it manually. And that's it for logging a static file. If I choose to log a stop and go file instead, I'll just set it to stop and go mode. And here I can choose my readings per point. This is going to be however many epochs you want to collect on every measurement that you take. I'm going to leave it set to one. And then the log interval is going to stay at one second. My rod height where I'm going to store to the internal memory, and I'll go ahead and press start logging. I'll go ahead and change my file name to 1121E, and try that again. All right, so in this case, because we are doing stop and go, we're right back into the measure screen where I can collect points, and every time I measure now, it's going to put a marker in that file. This does slow measurement down a little bit, depending on what you have the number of measurements set to when you set up logging. When I'm ready to stop logging, I can jump back over to the logging screen, and here I can show that I'm currently logging in stop and go mode, the amount of free memory, and the file name, and I can choose to stop logging from here. So that's it for GNSS logging in Carlson Layout. The next new feature I want to point out is the line report. So you can see here that I've created a couple of lines on my drawing. I can now get a full report of that line by going to Tools, Line Report. And here I can pick as many lines as I want from my drawing. So I'll pick this polyline and a couple more polylines. And you'll see that we're getting automatically the total 3D and 2D length. These happen to be the same because my line is at a fixed elevation and the vertex count. And from here, I can also create a report of this by tapping the report button. I'm going to do an HTML report, attach a logo if I want. And here I have a line report showing the uh, total length, 2D and 3D, of all the lines that I have selected, as well as the length of all the different segments of the line. And next I'll show you the feature interior angle check. So if we go under tools, 
and under angle check there's now a quick option to check an interior angle so I can just select points on my drawing to calculate the angle created by those points so here I've selected points 3, 4, and 5 and the interior angle is calculated at 39 degrees 54 minutes and 56 seconds so this is a quick way to check angles in your drawing available under the tools menu angle check and finally, I want to show some increased flexibility that's been added to the points list. If we go back to the points list, points, um, there's now the ability if you take an existing point, such as point three, something that was measured with a GPS, I can press the edit button. And we now have an option to override the elevation. So many times if you have a fixed elevation that you want to apply to your point, um, we're going to keep the measured X and Y coordinate that came from the GPS, but we can press override elevation and perhaps turn our elevation uh, to whatever we want it to be fixed at and lock it in. So I can press save and now back on my points list, my elevation is now 985. And then if I decide I want to go back to the measured elevation, of course, I can press edit, come back in, turn off override elevation, and it turns right back into the measured elevation. I want to point out the new art creation tool that's also available in this version. Under the create menu, you can go to the arc tool. And here we can create an arc from two points using either a point point radius method or point 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 method. So with using point point radius, I'm going to select two points from my drawing. And give it a radius of five feet and I can go ahead and create arcs using this method. You can also measure the points here, so if you wanted to create arcs as you're measuring, this is where you would use the measure icon here to create your arcs. So it is easy to create arcs in version 1.10. Finally, I want to talk about one new feature that was added to the survey module. I'm going to get to that by pressing the plus icon in the bottom right again. And this time, instead of adding this feature to my main menu, I'm just going to use icon to run auto by interval just once. And what Auto by Interval is going to allow you to do is collect points automatically by time or by distance. So in this case, I'm beginning at point 8. Uh, I can choose what layer it's going to be on. And here's where I'm going to choose whether I want it to be time or distance. So I'll just choose, choose time here, and I'm going to set it to 2 seconds um, in the interest of speed. And I'll just press Start. And the software is automatically going to begin storing a point every 2 seconds. You can do the same thing based on distance if you want to store a point based on distance. Either way, you need the survey module in order to access this new feature. So I hope this has given you a brief overview of what's available in the last few versions of Carlson Layout. Let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.